In this video, we're going to continue our solution of a linear programming problem with multiple decision variables. In the previous video, we solved this problem on the left and we identified the six decision variables, the objective function, as well as the various constraints. In this video, we're going to use Microsoft Excel to help us solve our solution. Um, given that we have more than two decision variables, we're going to need to use solvers. So let's go ahead and dive in. But if you need to review the constraints or objective functions, please see the previous video. So as per our previous video, we have six various decision variables. So we're going to start here and we're just gonna label our solution and we're gonna go through our decision variables. So we had um, slices of bread, <clears throat> of bread and we had that we labeled this decision variable B we had uh, tablespoons of peanut butter we labeled this decision variable P so we'll just say bread peanut butter uh, we had strawberry jelly We had that decision variable S, graham crackers. We labeled this decision variable G, milk. We labeled this decision variable M, and we had juice, and we labeled this decision variable J. So we can just go ahead and format our cells appropriately so that we get this a little bit clearer. So that, that is nice. And we had our cost associated with each one of these decision variables. And we remember that this was uh, five, five cents, so $0.05, four cents, seven cents, um, eight cents for graham crackers, 15 cents for uh, milk, and 35 cents for juice. And we can format these cells so that they have the dollar sign in front of them, just like that. And we'll highlight our decision variable cells and we will just format our cells. So let's put a nice thick border around our cells and we'll fill our internal color there with yellow. So we remember that these are our decision variables. And then we have our total cost cell. And as you'll remember from the previous question, we're looking to minimize our cost here. So we're gonna write our objective function just to remind ourselves. So min Z is equal to 0.05 B plus 0.04 P plus 0.07 S plus 0.08 G plus 0.15 M plus 0.35. J, right? This was our this was our objective function that we had set in our previous uh, problem. Now we're going to go and we're going to label our constraints. So our first constraint in our problem was that um, there was a minimum number of calories that students had to have. So um, minimum calories, and we can just format this so that it fits that. And in our previous um, in our previous video, we said that 70B plus 100P plus 50S plus 60G plus 150M plus 100J. Label this our right hand side, left hand side, right hand side. And we said that this must be greater than or equal to 400, right? This was being this was reflective that you needed a minimum of 400 calories for our lunches. We also had a maximum number of calories and our maximum number of calories was no more than 600 calories. And we again said that this equation constraint was exactly the same as above. And we said less than or equal to 600. <clears throat> We also remember that we had um, a constraint that said that no more than 30% of the total calories should come from fat. 
and we put our equation in standard notation in the previous video. So if you need to um, revisit that, please see the previous video. So we'll just say um, uh, maximum, maximum fat. And we had this was minus 11B plus 45P plus 2G plus 25M minus 30J minus 15S. And we said that this must be less than or equal to zero. Again, if you need to revisit this equation, please see the previous example, um, but this is our standard notation of our um, constraint. <clears throat> we also had a constraint for vitamin C, and we we're told that um, each student should consume, consume at least 60 milligrams of vitamin C, and we had the following equation for vitamin C, so we had 3S plus 2M plus 120J, and we said that this must be greater than or equal to 60. For protein, we are told that each student must consume at least 12 grams of protein, for which we had the equation 3B plus 4P plus G plus 8M plus J must be greater than or equal to 12. We're told that bread, we must have two slices of bread. So uh, 1B is equal to two. And we, had, we were told that uh, each student uh, must have at least twice as much peanut butter as jelly. So peanut butter versus jelly. And we crafted this constraint again in the previous video. So we had one, whoops, one P minus two S. And we said that this must be greater than or equal to zero. And then we were told that each student must have at least one cup of liquid. So they must have one milk plus one juice, and this must be greater than or equal to one. And then of course we had our non-negativity constraints, but uh, we won't deal with that at this stage. So now that we have our constraints typed in, we have to set up our functions. So for our total cost function, we're going to write equals sum product. We're going to highlight our costs, comma, and then highlight our decision variables. And we're going to put dollar signs to lock our reference cells for our decision variables. So your equation should look something like this. So sum product, B5 to G5, comma, B3 to G3. We'll hit enter, and then we'll do the same thing for our left-hand side. So again, equals sum product. We're going to highlight B8 to G8, comma, and then we'll highlight B3, G3. And again, we're going to put our dollar signs in here to lock our reference cells. So B3, G3, uh, with dollar signs in front of the B3s and G3s, and then we're going to hit enter. And then we'll just wait, we'll bring our cursor over so we have this thick black cross and we'll double click and it will automatically populate for us. So now that we have set up our sheet, we're ready to solve. So let's go ahead and we'll go to our data tab and we're gonna click solver. And you should have a window that pops up that looks like this. So. First, we're going to set our objective cell. So our objective cell here is in H5. Of course, we're doing a minimization. So we're going to click on minimization. 
and then we're going to highlight by changing variables. These are our decision variables. So we're going to highlight our decision variables. And then we're going to add our constraints. So our first constraint, our left-hand side is greater than or equal to our right-hand side. So we'll click add. Our second constraint, well, these two have the same symbol, so we'll highlight both of them. Less than or equal to our right-hand side, whoops. Less than or equal to our right-hand side. We'll click add. These two are both greater than or equal to, so we'll highlight those at the same time. So left-hand side greater than or equal to our right-hand side. This, our bread, left-hand side is equal to two. And then finally, we'll do our last constraint here greater than or equal to our right-hand side, and we'll click OK. And now all of our constraints should be added. We're going to make sure that our make unconstrained variables non-negative is checked. This deals with our non-negativity constraint. And then we're going to make sure that we pick simplex LP. So once we've done that, we can click Solve. And you should have a pop-up window that looks like this. And of course, we're going to click for our answer report. And we can see our answer report here. And as you can see, we have a number of binding constraints here. Um, the constraints that are non-binding are perhaps more easily to identify uh, since there are fewer of them but our protein is a non-binding constraint and our maximum calories is a non-binding constraint. <clears throat> but effectively, this is the makeup of your, um, of your sandwich. So we're looking at two slices of bread, 0 0.75, 0 0.57 tablespoons of peanut butter, 0 0.28 or 29 tablespoons of strawberry jelly, 1.034 1 1.0394 of a graham cracker 0 0.5157 cups of milk and 0 0.4842 cups of juice of course this allows us in uh, linear programming solutions to have um, continuous variables so this is why our solution looks like this um, if you wanted to have integer values of course that is something else uh, but we'll leave that for another video. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.